Hi, welcome back for another episode of Watches Oliver Smith. I'm here in Scottsdale with my good friend and watch director of Oliver Smith timepieces, Mr. George Reed. Today, we're going to talk about Bremont. We're gonna take a trip across the pond to the British Isles. And normally at this time, I would talk about what I'm wearing, but I'm not going to do that today because I wanna talk about golf clubs, just for a second, because I'm a student of the game, not very good, but I've been playing my whole life. My father was a big golf fan and his father yeah, not came very over good. He from, kills me. Uh, he came over from England when he was 15 years old in about 1915. And uh, today I have two golf clubs that are really intriguing to me. They sit by my desk here, the front of the store. And uh, one is an iron made in Scotland, it says on the back of, and then the other one, is very simply says Argyle with a little acorn on it. I love it, that's perfect. And uh, you can see that the, um, the grooves have progressed. So this club is probably a lot older than the, this one. Yeah. And then the grooves, you can see we're all handmade in here. So don't know the age of these, but just find it very interesting from a craft standpoint. Absolutely. Of how these things are made. Kind of dovetails so, into the watch thing, yeah. So George, yeah. tell us a little bit about what uh, we're gonna talk about today. Sure, um, today we're gonna talk about uh, Bremont timepieces. Um, it is one of my favorite young brands, um, a really good story to tell. Um, it is uh, the story of the Brothers English. Uh, Nick and Giles uh, grew up the sons of a uh, retired RAF pilot, and they grew up flying. Um, they grew up uh, restoring and flying vintage aircraft. Uh, uh, the kids uh, were uh, uh, children of privilege. They grew up in this, this great environment, uh, uh, flying all the time. And then uh, 1995, a bit of tragedy hits. They, um, uh, Nick was flying with his father, Ewan, in, in an air show. Uh, Giles was actually on the ground going up in the next sortie. And uh, there was an accident, there was a crash. And um, un unfortunately, uh, they, they lost it when their father passed in the crash. And then Nick spent the better part of a year in a hospital bed. Um, his brother Giles uh, went to see him every single day. And through that tragedy came um, a real attitude of life is short and uh, every moment is precious and you shouldn't do something you don't wanna do. And both the brothers, um, grew up uh, uh, fixing these planes and kind of tinkering and they always had a love for fine timepieces. So through the course of their discussions over, over that year, uh, they decided to form Bremont Watch Company. Um, they sold their company, they had a, a media company at the time, sold it, went all in. Um, so that was about 1995. By 2002, they had kind of realized their dreams and really first started putting these watches out. Um, their hope was to resurrect the great British tradition of watchmaking. Um, everybody thinks Switzerland, um, maybe Germany, Elanga and Suna, um, sometimes Japan. Uh, Seiko makes fantastic watches, but a lot of for this- For a long time. Uh, yeah. For a long time, yeah. Um, uh, but a lot of this tradition was really born in Great Britain. Um, there's uh, 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 George Daniels and, and, and before that, uh, Harrison um, invented longitude, th things of that nature. Didn't so, uh, Hans, the founder of Rolex, start in Great Britain? At Wilsdorf, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yep, right. yep. So, so the Brothers English really wanted to resurrect this tradition. Um, so they started in Switzerland, like everybody has to, but slowly but surely they've been moving all of their um, uh, production and manufacture back to Great Britain, um, Henley on Thames. They have this, um, this really cool facility. And this year um, should be the year they're gonna do their first in-house manufactured movement. But what they're known for uh, with their watches nowadays, um, I like the term, they make watches to be worn the way other manufacturers only advertise. Um, they want you to wear these things. They want you to beat them up. Case in point, this one in the middle here is uh, the uh, MB2, which stands for Martin Baker II. This watch is literally designed to take the G-forces from a Martin Baker ejector seat. Um, it is the most shock resistant watch I know of. The, the, the whole top uh, bezel and uh, uh, the crown here, uh, excuse me, the, uh, the horns here are all uh, hardened stainless steel. They call it a tip trick case. Um, incredibly robust watch. Uh, it has an inner rotating bezel, but even cooler than that, there's a version of this, the MB1, 
the only way to get an MB1 is to have been ejected from Martin Baker ejector <laughs> seat. You actually get this little card and then the, uh, the serial numbers match and things like that. Right. Um, the other thing they're really oh known as- How many yeah, of those have they given away? Not, not too many that I know of. There is actually a gentleman out here in Scottsdale who has one, I've seen yeah. one, I've held one. Yeah. Um, he's really into it. He has custom made vans that, that, that have the Bremont logo all over him. And then his, uh, his Corvette, the license plate is red one for the, uh, the, the red bezel that the, uh, the, the MB1 would have. Yeah. Um, the other thing they're known Known for is their passion projects. Um, I was first introduced to their, uh, their, their their specialty pieces with the HMS Victory. Um, the HMS Victory was an old wooden battleship uh, from the Battle of Trafalgar uh, that they were restoring. So Nick and Giles heard about this. They wanted to get involved. So um, they took parts of the, the wood and the nails that were taken off and uh, used them in a special line of watches that uh, a portion of the proceeds went to fund the restoration of, of the, the victory. And it was a huge success. And since then, they've done all sorts of different different ones. This is one of the newest ones. Um, this is uh, the resurrection of Hughes's Bruce Goose. So this is the Hercules H1. Uh, it's a GMT, um, this really beautiful, it almost looks like an aluminum bezel. And then on the back side, you had this propeller rotor and the, there's actually wood from the Spruce Goose. Again, portion of the proceeds go to help the, the restoration. That but, was um, a big release a year ago? That was, that, that was last year's, yeah. yep. This year they're doing one uh, for uh, Stephen Hawking's, uh, the Hawking Foundation. Um, I haven't actually been hands-on with it yet. Hopefully I'll have one here soon. But um, just, a, just a fantastic company that we're uh, really thrilled to be a part of. Give us some idea of the price points of these pieces, George. Well, and, and that's what I've, I've really liked about these. Um, they really have something in, in, in all those entry level price points. Mm -hmm. uh, say, say three to four thousand to get into the brand, and then all the way up to something like the Spruce Goose, you're going to be uh, looking at that twelve, thirteen thousand. They've done versions like that HMS Victory. They did a gold version, twenty five thousand, and we were a little trepidatious. Sold out. Um, so they've been able to really achieve within each price point exactly what they want to do. Um, the the production is somewhat limited, right? I Correct. Mean, how much is the production a year? They're still very small. They're sub 5,000. Um, they're they're going to be growing um, as their manufacturer grows. And then um, with the new movement, that's going to be that's going to be the key, doing their own movement. I'm um, really, really being able to take control. They haven't had a whole generation of watches yet, no. really. Right? No. Um, and and my, my favorite thing about this company is those stories I've told you, and there, there's, there's plenty others that, that I didn't get a chance to get to. You can meet Nick and Giles. Um, they're, 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 they're flesh and bone. They're, they're, it's, it's not like you can't meet Lou Abraham Brigade. You can't, you can't meet all these guys, but, yeah. but you can hear this. You can go have a beer with them. You can hear the stories from these guys. They're both fantastic. Um, yeah. Actually, uh, Nick was in the Kingsman, which is kind, kind of cool. They did, they did the watches for the first Kingsman movie, and it's actually right. a scene where Nick's, Nick's in the background. Right. So it's kind of cool. It kind of uh, takes a little bit of... Uh moxie to collect watches that aren't as collectible. It, it, point, it is. Right? This, is this is for the visionaries. This is for the guy who, who wants something you're not going to see every day. Right. Um, right. And you can stand behind it 110%. The manufacturer is incredible, but this isn't something your buddy's going to know about. So there, there is, it does take that special guy to be the, the leader right. to, to, to collect it. Yeah, yeah it might for be sure. a good idea for a gift. Yeah, If absolutely. you'd like to speak to us more about Bremont, please reach out to us in Scottsdale. Or you can also reach us, Elizabeth and Tim and Skylar up in Aspen at our boutique. Thanks for listening and stay safe, everyone.